All right. Chapter 15, Section 2. The Second New Deal Takes Hold. Starts out talking about the second hundred days. Remember when Roosevelt first took over? Talked about in the last section. Uh, it was the first hundred days they passed all the programs uh, to help people. A couple years into his presidency, everything was not good again. The economy had not resurged back like he'd expected. It had got better, uh, but it still wasn't as good as he wanted. So by 1935, he gets Congress to pass another series of, of uh, programs, which would be called the Second New Deal. Uh, it tells you about his wife, Eleanor, how she went around the country and observed a lot of this stuff because Franklin, remember, he had had polio, so he was paralyzed. Uh, he did get around, but not, not as much as other presidents because obviously he just couldn't get around as good. He's in a wheelchair. And uh, so his wife was kind of his eyes and ears. And she went around the country and she would come back and report back to him and tell him kind of what was going on. One thing she saw was, uh, first thing it talks about here is farmers. Uh, remember, we talked about earlier, all throughout the 1920s, man, life sucked for farmers. So, and it was still even worse now in the depression. Um, Congress had, or the Supreme Court had struck down the Agricultural Adjustment Act, so Roosevelt and Congress pass a new law, uh, the Second Agricultural Adjustment Act, it, and it, it's a bumblebee attacking me. It basically what it did is it gave a few billion dollars and allowed farmers to have access to that money if they needed to borrow money or get a loan to buy crops or whatever. Uh, and it, and it helped a lot of farmers get back on their feet. All right. One of the things, kind of a side project that, that was created was this, uh, with this money to help farmers were professional photographers that their job was to go around the country in rural areas. Remember rural means out in the country and take pictures and document this uh, because the government wanted to document this was the worst economic crisis in history, and they wanted wanted proof of how bad it was. Uh, the most famous photographer was named Dorothea Lange. All right, she takes this picture. I would say, in my opinion, it's probably the most famous photograph ever taken in the United States of America. Uh, it's called Migrant Mother. There's a picture of it in your textbook on page 521. Uh, Dorothea Lang was, she was a really good photographer because she herself, just like Roosevelt, had had polio earlier in her life and it kind of crippled her, not as bad as Roosevelt. She could walk, but like one of her legs was longer than the other, so she walked gimpy with a limp. And, uh, it, you know, a lot of people were, you know, they were proud people that were devastated because they didn't have jobs. And when this woman came walking up, you know, they weren't threatened by her because they knew she had suffered too so a lot of times they would let her take pictures that they might not have let somebody else so she takes this picture of this woman that would be called the picture would be called migrant mother and it was her and like six kids or so and i mean they had sold the tires off their car and didn't have nothing and it was it was supposed to be the end but after the picture gets published it had a did have a happy ending the woman made it to california and like all her kids lived and stuff, and a lot of people from all over the country, you know, donated stuff to her food and things. But not all of them had a happy ending. But uh, anyway, moving on, the next thing, this was a big one. It's called the Works Progress Administration. This, from 1935 to 1943, $11 billion was spent, which that's $11 billion in the 30s and 40s would be hundreds of billions in today's money uh and it created more than eight million jobs uh these workers built 850 airports throughout the country uh they constructed or repaired 651,000 miles of roads and streets uh put up more than 125,000 public buildings all right uh, 
women made garments. They did all kinds of other little stuff too, planted trees, raked leaves, anything. It gave people a paycheck and gave them some dignity back and they loved it. And for a little foreshadowing, stuff like this is what would allow the United States to win World War II that we didn't even know was gonna happen yet. Because our what you'll find out when we get to World War II is we won it by overwhelming the enemy with supplies. We had all these airports. We had all this massive infrastructure that doesn't get damaged in the war. And that's how we were able to win it. And then after the war, after World War II, we become the most powerful country in the world because we had all this infrastructure that was built during the Great Depression. All the roads, all the you know public buildings, all the airports. And uh, all that stuff went hand in hand in us becoming the most powerful country in the world. So there you go. Another relief program uh, for kids, y'all, some of y'all's age, National Youth Administration. It was just set up to give uh, ed kids availability of money to go to ed get education, to go to college or to get job training. You know, in the book, there's a picture of a woman training to be a dental assistant. Um, so it did a lot of good for young people. Um, other things, improving labor conditions. Here's one that's important to us today. The Wagner Act was passed. Um, it allowed collective bargaining, which is unions, you know, which took some power away from the owners and gave power to the workers. Uh, 1938, here's a real important one for us still today. Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act, which set maximum hours at 44 hours per week. After two years, that became 40 hours per week. And that is our work week now, 40 hours a week. Uh, it also set a minimum wage at 25 cents an hour, which eventually became 40 cents an hour by 1945. Remember, money was worth a lot more back then but it, it set the precedent of the government sets a minimum wage. The government sets the maximum work hours for a week. Uh, it, in addition, it set uh, rules for employment for workers under 16, and it banned hazardous work for people under 18. So you couldn't have, you couldn't be a 16 year old and be working some dangerous job in a coal mine or something, you know. Now don't get me wrong, did that still happen? Probably, but if, employers got caught then they there was something the government could do to them you'll find them or something now all right and probably i would say not probably the most important thing that came out of the second new deal to all of us today still living is the social security act all right the social security act here's the three things it had three parts here they are uh the first part it was old age insurance for retirees 65 years or older and their spouses. The insurance was a supplemental retirement plan. Half of the funds came from the worker and half from the employer. So it gave people a retirement. All right. Today, I think you got to be 67 to get it. People my age, or it'll probably be 70 by the time I retire, or by the time some of you retire. You'll work your whole lives. They will take money out of your check every week every month every how often you get paid and it's to go to pay social security but that is not a tax because you if you live long enough you'll get that money back okay it's it's a it's a super important thing in the depression what it did is all of a sudden all these people and there were a few million that were 65 and older got to retire so once they retired voila you got millions of jobs that the younger people that were unemployed could now get these jobs. And these people that were 65 and older had an income coming in where they could, you know, buy stuff and live. And uh, so it was a, a brilliant idea. Uh, the second part of it, it created an unemployment compensation system. It was funded by a federal tax on employers, which was, you know, a few dollars a week. Uh, but that's that's how, like, if somebody did lose their job, they could apply. If they had been working, they could apply for several weeks of unemployment. So they would be able to keep buying food and stuff like that. Uh, and then the third thing it did, this was unprecedented. It provided aid to families with dependent children and people with disabilities. 
and the aid was paid for by federal funds that was made available to the states. Uh, I think largely this was put in there due to the fact that FDR had a disability. You know, he was in a wheelchair from polio. And at the time, at this time in our country, people that had disabilities were looked down on. Was it right? No. It's definitely not the way it should have been, but that's the way it was. Uh, the government had not passed laws to make wheelchair ramps and things like that. And it was just for people with disabilities, life was a whole lot harder than it is now. And it, I'm, don't get me wrong. It's, I imagine it's still super hard for people with disabilities, but it would have been way worse living in 1930s and 40s. And, uh, but this helped. This, this gave families that had kids that were never going to be able to go out and get a job because they had some major disability this gave them money coming in where they could live and buy food and stuff. I mean, it was just infinitely important to these families. Uh, to this day, it still is. Some of your grandparents that are retired are getting social, social security. My dad right now is on social security. My grandmother, my dad's mother was in a nursing home for four or five years before she died. And my dad and them never had to pay anything for her because her social security, where she'd worked her whole life, her social security check went to the nursing home. That's how the nursing home got paid. So my dad and his brothers didn't have to pay her, pay anything to the nursing home. It was awesome. Because uh, nobody wants to be a burden on their family when you're, you know, you're old. Uh, but anyway, the Social Security Act can't say enough about the importance of it. All right, last thing for section two here. Uh, public utilities, uh, one of the things, that, which this went back to TVA, you know, electrifying the Tennessee Valley, uh, Roosevelt really wanted electricity spread around the country because, again, it's part of our infrastructure, which is your roads, your bridges, your sewers, your electricity, all that stuff. This is this stat. 1935, 12% of American farms had electricity, all right? Roosevelt established the Rural Electrification Administration, which worked with local areas and rural areas to bring electricity. By 1945, 48% of farms had electricity. By 1949, 90% of rural areas had electricity. So that's it went from 12% in 35 in 14 years, 90% of rural areas had electricity. Huge deal. Um, the Public Utility Holding Company Act of 35 took aim at financial corruption in the public utility industry. So again, just further gave the government power to protect people and keep, you know, local governments from doing shady things and taking advantage of the public and stuff like that. Um, and that's it for session two. There is, I will tell you, there is on page 524, it's a really, really good chart in your book. And it lists, it's the whole page, it lists the New Deal programs. Uh, that's what I would, if I was going to study the New Deal programs, I would look at that chart. It would be a great, and it's real short and to the point, tells you exactly what each program did. But uh, it's good, it's on page 524. All right, we'll stop it there and pick up with section three later.